Hello there. Welcome back to my channel, Snips by Kelly. I'm Kelly, and tonight I'm excited to continue on in part four of five in our Everyday Moment series. We're also going to actually kill two birds with one stone. I'm not sure who made up that saying. It's terrible. I don't want to think about killing birds, but we're going to accomplish two things at once, and we're going to continue on in part two of the Memory Lane series at the same time. We're going to use the Memory Lane series to scrapbook our everyday moments for this week. So you can see that parts and pieces of my memory lane are missing, but I'm going to link in the description layout number one of the memory lane series and the full process video where I describe in detail the full memory lane bundle and all the parts and pieces. I created the very first layout in this memory lane series as a um, tribute to my son and daughter-in-law on the closing of their first home. In that layout process video, we learned how to use water brushes with our regular ink pads and do a watercolor wash and stamp over the top of it. And I have some leftover houses and other little bits that I'm hoping as promised to use on this Everyday Moments layout to use some of those pieces up. So our Everyday Moments layout uh, for this week is featuring Waylon James again. Waylon James, our youngest grandchild. He's been featured a lot lately because he is the youngest and many of the others have many, many layouts about them already. So it just seems that it's his turn. He was playing in a cardboard box from his brand new stroller that I was trying to put together and he was having way more fun with the box than with his toys. Here's a layout that I created years ago featuring Carter Kirk, our other grandson. We only have two grandsons and all the rest of our grandchildren are girls. And Carter Kirk was playing in a refrigerator box. One July 4th, years and years ago, our refrigerator broke down. Why do appliances break down on holidays? I have no idea. But it was a layout that I created of him playing in the box and it was designed to feature mostly stamping. And it was also designed to feature colors that could lend themselves to either feminine or masculine. So now for Waylon James, the majority of the Memory Lane series at first glance feels a little feminine, but I'm actually going to create using his photos and make it a little less feminine and it's going to be great. So here is our brand new acorn and we're going to hold up our acorn next to toffee. So sometimes you can't really tell the difference until you really put them up close, but our acorn is here. I have some shortbread and some espresso and some craft. I actually end up pulling in the craft and um, bringing down some of those more feminine tones by adding in the neutrals and coordinating those with more of a cardboard box feel. Now I have a stack here. I believe I have 10 different examples of grid designs. Grid designs have been around forever. Many people use them over and over, but I love using variations of grid designs. Here is a layout that I completed called Four Seasons Winter, and I was the guest designer for Close to My Heart in a four-part series, Winter, Spring, Summer, and Fall, where I applied different pattern papers for each season to the same base layout. I love doing that. I love going to our shop site and I'm going to show you here how to do this and finding old workshop guides and applying new papers. It's so fun. And I think Waylon James um, in the cardboard box in our everyday series is going to work. Here you see that same layout featuring the spring collection of four seasons. And it is a basic grid where the grid is the background and all of the the photos are on the front and they're quite straight and even and in you know somewhat of a formula so here is our flower shop series another grid smaller grid as the background added a scalloped border around that and then made the photos more whimsical and in a hodgepodge fashion so that's another example of a basic grid here we have another basic grid in our christmas story series where i used more of a rectangle grid put them in the shape of diamonds 
lines and ran them across the page at an angle just for some added interest and a little different take on a grid as a background. Here we have Backyard Bliss where the entire layout, both pages, is the grid itself with the photos over the top and the grid is used as a background element. Here we have Smarty Pants that has a focal left page and a basic grid on the right page, but I've used transition strips in between portions of the grid for added interest. So you can add all of those photos right within the grid, or you can use the grid as the decorative background. There is a million ways, well, okay, maybe not a million. There is a lot of ways to do a grid. Here we have our, oh, I think it's spooktacular, um, our Halloween theme from this past year, and it is a full page Page grid on the companion page but it's whimsical and it's hodgepodgey to look like Halloween with lots of little paper bits. Here's a standard grid with candid moments where the photos are embedded right within and here is a really 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 old grid. One of the very first that I ever created where you have a focal decorative page. This is called Beautiful Friendship. And we did not have the capacity back then to make the great three by three photos that we have now on our picture mates. So here is Serenity, one of my all time favorites ever, 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 where you are incorporating gorgeous pattern, pattern papers again in the background. So, so many examples of grids. And I felt like um, it's such a great way going back to the shop site, which I'll link in the description here. And when you go into more, and you go into workshop guides, you will see tons and tons of past workshop guides. And I love to pull those out. And the Four Seasons is in that uh, list there. And you can actually see the layout that is my inspiration tonight. So here I am pulling in a little bit of craft paper, but I do want to tone down the colors with the craft paper, but I also want to have added color in the layout as well. So I love the concept of having that background and then adding the grid. I could have it on the wash side or I could have it on the stripe side, but I'm kind of contemplating something a little interesting. I probably will gut that frame, but I I love the idea of making the craft paper appear like it's a box. So a lot of times I'm always looking for an element to add to the background of the page. And it's a lot of times simply a square. A lot of times I'll go to the Cricut and I'll find an overlay. I'll find a scalloped square. I'll find a stitched frame. I'll find something that adds an added element of interest that makes that layout a little bit different than every other layout that just has the square background. So I'm going to take this 11 by 11 craft cardstock and I'm going to score it all the way around at one half. And at the time of doing this video, I really had no idea what I was doing. <laughs> I had this concept in my head of making it seem like a cardboard box. So now that it's scored, I can snip the edges so that it would actually fold upward or downward like a box and maybe add a little bit of foam tape or dimension to it so it almost looks like I'm creating the layout inside a box. Now I end up changing it ever so slightly as we move forward here because I'm just playing around with a concept or an idea. So I'm going to fold my score lines in and then I'm going to add a little bit of toffee ink uh, to distress it a little bit and make it look like the tattered cardboard box like we see Waylon peeking out of. What is it with cardboard boxes? We always had so much fun with cardboard boxes. We made cards, cars, we made trains, we made little stove tops and we colored burners on top and pretended like we were cooking and it seems like it was a simpler time but if I'm being honest kids today have just as much fun playing in cardboard boxes as we did so I wasn't quite sure what I was going to do with this 
I just had this idea in my head to do something different and unique with it instead of the same old thing. So I was kind of thinking I would have the box folded up word and then put that down on some pattern paper as the base of course I will gut that frame because I don't want to waste the interior and I can't quite decide if I'm going to use the stripe side or the watercolor wash side so I'm kind of trying to draw from the greens and the yellows in there and the more um, colors in there that can lend themselves in either direction masculine or feminine I'm not afraid on masculine layouts or layouts with boys to use flowers and pastels. I have learned a long time ago that anything goes and I actually have created with my husband and I a lot with flowers. I've created with our sons with flowers, our grandsons with flowers, and it doesn't bother me a single bit. But I'm kind of trying to um, coordinate a little bit. There's really not much in the photo. There is a hodgepodge of colors on the side of the box. There's the browns. Um, Waylon, I think, is wearing kind of a grayish shirt. And he does have some green in his shoes. Um, and that seems to kind of stand out a little bit. I don't know why there's always one color that sort of seems to stand out a little bit. So now I have this little box over the top of the more colorful paper and I'm trying to decide if I wanna bring in the green and bring in some sage. So I have that 12 by 12 frame that I gutted by cutting from one inch to 11 inches on all four sides so that I could use the middle for something else. And then I'm trying to decide if I'm going to want an additional frame on the interior and then just have a little bit of that color peek out um, and then put the boxy feel here and create a grid inside the box. So I'm toggling back and forth and I end up liking the striped side the best and I feel like there's a multi um, uh, dimension there with all the different colors and there is some really speckled colors throughout the photo because of the advertisement on the side of Wayland's cardboard box um, and so I do want to go with the striped side and I'm trying to incorporate the sage and i decide that I don't need that extra sage piece. I just want that little pop of color in the background to pop against the craft paper. Um, and so Wayland's photo on the left page is a five by seven. On the right page, I have four three by four photos. And um, here is where I decide to actually flip the box that I created over. And then I decide to either put the box together and pop it up with foam tape, which I felt was maybe a little too much height. Um, and I actually end up popping up the center of the box, <coughs> excuse me, and then um, adhering down the sides of the box so that you get that boxy feel, but yet it's functional and it will slide right into the page protector and it will work so now I'm grabbing some three by three squares and I'm going to try to pull out a little less of the florals. Now, if you're obviously not, if you're scrapping along and you're obviously not scrapping a photo of someone in a box, <laughs> Uh, you may want to flip your patterns over and have them lend themselves to your photos. So there's all kinds of florals on the backs of these and there are, um, you know, patterns in these that are a little bit more feminine, um, both in color and in pattern. So I really like the idea there of um, creating that grid on the interior and then building from there. So I have that little boxy feel. I'm going to have that five by seven of Waylon in there. And then I started to say that the photos on the right side are two three by four verticals and two three by four horizontals. So now I have a seven and a half by eight and a half inch craft piece. And then I have a 
Um, no, I do not. I have a seven and a half. But, oh, excuse me. Eight. Yeah. Seven and a half by eight and a half inch piece. And then a five. Mm, I am so sorry, you guys. Start again. I have a seven and three quarters by an eight and three quarters inch craft piece, a seven and a half by an eight and a half inch white daisy piece, and then a photo mat that is five and a fourth by seven and a fourth, and then a five by seven photo. Now I've decided to add a little bit of toffee ink and kind of make that box a little bit more like a distressed box. Usually by the time all of the grandkids get done playing with the box, Boxes. They are pretty tattered and wrinkled and they've had some use before they have to go to the burn bin. And so I'm going to add a little bit and I'm trying to add some to the um, the score lines as well to just really kind of make that um, little edge stand out as just something different. Now this would totally work as a regular 11 by 11 craft piece that doesn't have score lines and doesn't look like a box, but why not try something a little bit different for your base is what I'm thinking instead of, um, instead of always doing the same thing. I will fold in those tabs and adhere the tabs down so there's a little notch in each corner and I decide that that's a little bit more functional than having those flaps sticking out. You could also just trim those flaps off as well and as it turns out those little notches in the flaps fit perfectly inside the gutted frame so you can lay it right over the top of the gutted frame and you don't need an additional layer or an additional piece underneath. I love it when that works out by complete accident. So now that I'm about done with the inking, um, I will have my pieces and I will do the right page pieces off camera except for the pieces that will hold the photo. I will give you photos. I will give you the measurements for those. So now I'm able to lay that piece right on top of the more vibrant wash colors on the back. And I'm excited now to give this a try and bend those corners in. And I've just created a nice little additional element here for the page. And it sort of ties in to the box photos. Thinking, trying to think outside of the box while Waylon is inside the box. <laughs> so again, I'm adding a ton of foam tape. If you're not a foam tape person, you can skip that, but I'm adding a ton of foam tape on the interior of the boxy piece. And then I'm just adhering the flaps down because we don't need those flaps. And I end up kind of liking that little notched look on the corner. It gave it a whole um, additional look or feel to that base. So now I will fold those back and I will add those to the base and I will build the background grid right on top of that. I'm just going to place it in place. I'm, I'm not going to adhere it all the way down yes, just yet. I want to put my pieces in place and see how I'm doing with this. And I think those three by three squares can just go right snug up to the scored lines on the edges and then we can put those middle pieces in. So I'm trying to remember the order that I had them in because I didn't pull them off in the right order and I'm just going to arrange them until it's pleasing to my eye. So this is, like I said, part four of five in the whole series of five scrapbooking everyday moments. So I will link in the description parts one through three um, and you can uh, um, check those out if if you want to go back to the beginning if you're just popping in during this series um, and it's also part two of the memory lane
Halloween series. Okay, so now I really like how that is looking and it has a little bit of a different feel to it. And again, I keep coming back and trying that sage piece thinking I need a base and I actually end up not using the base at all. It's just fine without the base, but it's just, I am a layerer. I love layering. I love photo mats. I love uh, layers on pages. I love to have just the ridges of certain things showing. It's something that I really, really love. And so I I'm just trying to work that out here and see if we need that in this or if we don't and I end up scrapping that idea. So now I'm going to go ahead off camera and repeat that performance with most of the pieces for the right page and um, we will have a little bit different of measurements for the right page than we do for the left but that based craft piece and those uh, three by three pattern paper squares are identical on both sides. I just rearrange the order of those squares for a little added interest and then I actually added foam tape on the back of that longer photo mat. There's a lot of large white showing there. I'm showing you the measurements again since I kind of bumbled up the measurements when I first told them to you. So you can see my measurements there if you want to create on your own. I'm also showing you some of those more floral backgrounds as well so that you can see how easy it would be to flip these around and to be able to use different patterns that lend themselves. It'd be so easy to change the craft paper out to a different color as well that lent itself to more to the theme of your photos and the color of your photos. So, so easy. So I really hope that you'll go to the shop site and check out the more section where you'll find our guides and our workshops and they just started doing that this past year and they started going backwards and adding some of our back files and um, all of our workshop guides for our main lines are typically a download not our specials but our main lines sometimes our specials as well and when you go under the purchase button whether you've purchased or not you can typically download Download our guides for our company workshops um, not my personal workshops but for our company workshops right there and they're a great go-to I have a lot of paper crafters that like to do my workshops which are an altered version using the workshop kits and using the materials and they're typically a stretched version where you get 10 to 12 pages with each workshop instead of six pages but a lot of them also love the company's versions as well and especially if they have lots of photos for a particular theme they may do my version as well as the company's version but even if they're not doing the company's version and they're doing my version I always prompt them and remind them to go and download those guides because there's amazing ideas and what's old is new again or what is applied to one paper becomes new when it's applied to another paper and other embellishments. So for example, this layout here that is inspired by the four seasons, winter, spring, summer, and fall collection and workshop, you can go to that more section and to the workshop guide section, find the four seasons workshop and download the entire workshop for free the workshop guide, then you can do exactly what I'm doing here is make your take of that workshop. All of the dimensions are included. You see full color photos of inspiration and it's just an amazing thing to do. There are times when I love spending hours upon hours or days upon days creating. Okay, so now for this piece here, um, I believe we have, ah, it's an eight and a half by eight and a half. A uh, white daisy piece and an eight and a fourth by eight and a fourth sage piece, but double check my uh, my uh, measurements there. Uh, I hold them up to the versamat and you can see them super clear. Sometimes when I'm doing a voiceover, the numbers are so tiny and I have cheaters I can't see. <laughs> 
I think I probably wrote it down somewhere, but do as I do, not always as I say. I show you exactly on there what those measurements are. So now I'm going to arrange um, my photos, one horizontal, one vertical, and one another one horizontal and another one vertical in a little box and I'm leaving an edge around the top and around the bottom and we're going to decorate the center where it leaves a gap where it doesn't come together. So I just did a variety like I like I like the photo of Waylon where you just see his little fanny going inside the box and then I love the one where he comes out on the other end and he's like peekaboo and he is so cute and he was like um mamma he calls me mamma and he tries to say grandma and he'll say mamma kk and so um he's really lucky because his grandmother on the other side of the family is also grandma kelly so he only has to learn how to say grandma kelly once and it covers both of us <laughs> Uh, so anyway, back to those workshop guides. Yes, print them for free and apply those to other patterns. And a lot of times it will still take on a life of its own or you've done those workshops with so much time in between that it seems like it's new again or it doesn't go in the same album or it looks like a completely different workshop because you've applied different embellishments to it. The embellishments in the pattern papers change that workshop shop so much and what I was starting to say is that sometimes I'll spend hours upon hours and days upon days creating a workshop and then there are other days where I come home from work and I don't want to think I don't want to have to plan I just need a go-to or I need a gift or I need a layout fast and I will go to those workshop guides time and time again the same as our pattern books we actually have a brand new pattern book that is launching on September first and our last pattern books are volume I'm getting our volumes mixed up I think it was volume four that sold out right away or it was volume five and now we're on six or we were on four and now we're on five but you'll totally see it when you tune in and that uh, catalog launches but um, grab it up because the other ones sold out excuse me and so now I'm pulling some of those bits and pieces that I created with the first memory lane layout process video that I did, um, the um, closing of our son and daughter-in-law's home. I scrapbooked that memory and I said in that one that I was making extra bits and extra pieces just in case I could use those moving forward. So I know that I want to write on our journal strips. Sometimes I type on um, Avery clear labels. Sometimes I type on our journal strips. Sometimes I write on our journal strips. Sometimes I write right on the page. Sometimes I I write on cardstock strips and cut them apart. I mean, there's so many ways to journal. I'll journal on a hidden card, but I like writing on the journal strips and then snipping them apart in between the words when it's exactly the size I need it. And it makes me feel safe because if I, I like to use my own handwriting whenever I can. I do do quite a bit of typing too because I'm not that fond of my handwriting. But when I write on the strips, if I make a goober or I mess up, I am only wasting a little strip. And so I can just start over on another strip strip instead of messing up on that base page and then being in trouble, right? So now I have taken my anti-static pouch and I've taken the sticky off of some of the stickers that I think that I'm going to need. I've also um, taken those pieces that I stamped in the previous video, those houses, and I have fussy cut those out. I did the watercolor wash on those using our stamp pads, which you can again see in the that video that I've linked in the description and then I've added one color of marker to all of the bits and it is the gold brown blend and I've used the dark side and I've just went in over the wash and I've done some roof and window accents on the house I've done some branches and the tree trunk on the tree and I love that some of those houses are kind of like distressed looking like some of the wash 
bits were not perfect because it makes it look like a painted house. Some of them are in need of new paint and some of them look brand new. So now I have all these little bits and banners that I thought might work, but I can always pull more stickers off of the sticker sheet but as in true form um, using that original layout uh, workshop guide as my guide I'm going to use some banners but I'm going to shake it up on this layout a little bit I love this little house sticker here and I am going to use this little house sticker and it's going to be a little longer than the other banners and I love that it adds a little added sentiment to the page and I love that it says happiness lives here because we're hanging out at home and it's just a happy simple day so I'm going to add those and I'll likely add some foam tape and then I'm going to take the rest of the bits here and just try to create some clusters now I only actually had true two trees left over from the last process video for memory lane and so I'm going to snip one of those trees in half because as usual I would love to be able to use the rule of three and be able to have three of those trees to use to be able to create a visual triangle so I'll be able to make a little cluster on the upper left a little cluster on the lower right and then a cluster in the center on the right page and so this won't be over the top decorated. This is a simple page. I don't want to go too crazy. We're just playing at home in the cardboard box. And I love the play on the little houses because we're playing at home. It's everyday moments. And so I'm just kind of trying to toggle the colors so um, they mesh well. There's two different kinds of houses on the everyday moments stamp set. And so I'm using a combination. We have this little little sage sticker that I think I can do something with. I'm looking at the stamp set to see if maybe I want to stamp a sentiment on there or if I want to add a sticker or what I would like to do. I would like to pop up those trees on the right page and add some dimension in the center. I never mind overlapping little bits onto photos. Now if this drives you crazy you can rearrange your bits so that you're not overlapping photos but there's a ton of wasted space in some of those photos so there's a bunch of carpet showing in some of them there's just some you know little bits that don't really matter that I can overlap so there's a nice like connection in the middle that connects all of those photos together because of the overlap now as always it's a matter of simply arranging the clusters putting some foam tape on them. And then <clears throat> once I have my clusters together, then I'm able to add my journaling strips and it's all coming together. I'll want to maybe add a few more little stickers from the sticker sheet and perhaps I will embellish with some of the stamps from the stamp set likely the little heart um, it seems like that's kind of the go-to because it's the smallest stamp in the stamp set and I'm able to embellish with that I love the little sticker that says um is it say let's play you make me smile um those are so appropriate so so appropriate and i love um no it says playing around that's what i love um and it's so appropriate and i love how i've taken a theme that really has a feminine feel and it's totally working for little boy I love doing things like that. So now I have uh, all of the bits in place. I've added foam tape to those banners. I've added my journaling and my story. And I'm super happy with all of the little pieces and the combinations of colors. I added a couple little word stickers, one on the upper right and one on the uh, right page in the lower right. And I think that I would love, I kind of experimented with the heart. I did a little stamping with sage and a little stamping with toffee. So I could add a few little hearts. I'm not going to get too blingy. I'm not going to add a lot of extra bling, but I do 
think I could add some little dash lines around a little bit of the pattern with my Le Pen. I love this black Le Pen. It makes the finest lines and I <clears throat> often will add some little dashed or straight lines around some patterns, especially if it's a little bit more plain um, to be able to jazz it up and just add a little bit of interest. So I start out trying to use my ruler and then I get off a little bit on my ruler and honestly it's just so easy to do it freehand and I actually get off onto the toffee paper or the um, craft paper a little so I'm going to have to juggle my little piece there and just move it over just a teeny bit to the left and cover up my boo-boo. No worries. So now I'm just adding journal lines journaling lines to some of those squares and then I'm going to actually add some little stamped hearts to embellish and I think I'm getting happy with that. I'm so happy that we're getting to the point where we've completed two full layouts with the memory lane series and we have completed now layout four of five of our everyday moment series. So we have um a everyday moments play themed wreath layout. We have an apple picking layout with our um, autumn gnome collection. We have, hmm, I'm starting to draw a blank. What else did we have? A funny faces, a silly faces layout that we created for Claire Bear. Um, and now we have this layout. So we have one more layout in our Everyday Moment series. And I've really loved hearing from all of you about what kind of Everyday Moments you scrap. And I love finding out that so many of you are just like me and that you have many, many Everyday Moments that you scrap and you don't only scrap the special events and that makes me really happy. Um, while I'm thinking about it, uh, if you found this video to be useful, if you've gotten some useful tips or you were entertained um, or it's something that you can use and you've enjoyed the video, won't you please hit subscribe and the notifications bell so you're all set and ready for layout five in the series. I really do appreciate all of the subscriptions and the likes and the comments and the follows. It sure goes a long way on YouTube and building my YouTube channel. And I love sharing the love of paper crafting with people and trying to reach more people out there that would maybe get great joy in paper crafting. So now I am maybe adding a couple little heart stickers because I wasn't super happy with my heart stamping. And I thought maybe I could cover a couple of those up. Up, and then maybe I ended up just going back with the heart stamp and um, sometimes when I get to the end I'm like I'm there and then I get a little stamp happy and then I'm thinking I kind of should have thought uh, that those stamping of those little tiny bits out just a little bit more. Shoot me a comment and let me know um, if you have grandkids or kids that played in cardboard boxes. Let me know what a great layout would be that you could use this pattern for to scrap your everyday moments. I would love to hear from you. That's one of my favorite things to do is to read all of your comments and hear about your lives and all of your everyday moments. And there we have it. We have done it. I'm so happy with it and I hope you've loved this and you've enjoyed it. Happy scrapping everyone and we'll see you next week for video number five. Mm -hmm.